So, Osha, uh, imagine that somebody asked you to uh, perform an organ recital in a foreign country on a foreign instrument that you don't know. Uh, how would you put together a balanced uh, program for your recital? Well, I, first of all, I would try to know more about organ if that would be possible. Otherwise, it would be very hard to choose the right repertoire. Right. So, what what are the things you would want to know about that instrument? Specification. Specification. Style of the instrument. Style yeah. of the instrument. Organ builder, if that's possible to know the year of you no know, production and so on. Mm -hmm. Right. And once you know these things, you can decide, right, what sure. kind of pieces yes. uh, would you use and what kind of uh, things uh, would you think about when putting together this program, once you know the instrument? Well, then it would depend on the instrument, of course, but uh, if it would be like modern instrument on which you can perform basically anything, then I would think about, you know, various pieces. Of uh, different composers, variety, right? variety yes. Variety. Uh, so, uh, variety is important, right, to, to have a balance. What about uh, the the mood of the of the pieces? Should all the pieces be joyful or not necessarily? Probably not. I think it should be enough minor keys, but also major keys, so that it would not sound like funeral all the time or, you know, like wedding all the time. What about the, the tempo? Would you rather play everything fast or everything slowly? Well, you have to have different tempos, I think, in different pieces. Because if you would only play fast, probably people would get tired. But if you would play all time slowly, probably people would just fall asleep. How about uh, the the loudness of the of your music? Should everything be a very, um, I mean, very uh, loud, fortissimo, or maybe you could uh, play very soft in general? Well, I think it should be mixture of mixture mm -hmm. of you know loudness and mm -hmm. softness. Uh, so, is is there a principle you could follow? Uh, for loudness, for example, for the dramatization of this uh, recital, uh, everything uh, would you we use uh, like loud, soft, loud, soft, loud, soft, or is it another uh, principle where you put more intensity towards the end of the recital? Well, I think you should play something exciting at the beginning, right at the beginning. Mm -hmm. It would be a nice opening for your recital to have like fanfare, you know. Mm -hmm something like that but but then of course you can do soft after that and then loud again in the middle of your recital and then of course to finish you should probably loud right right and imagine what uh, what would happen if um, if you uh, uh, on your way to that recital you received an email from the organizer uh, which would tell you that this instrument had uh, uh, not that many stops that you imagined. For example, let's imagine you thought about 40 stops, right? Yes. And that in or organizer would say, oh, oops, I I mixed up one zero, right? Zero put <laughs> at the end. And now you have four stops. <laughs> that would be a disaster. And I you think. are already on your way, <laughs> on the plane, basically, or already leaving. So, well, one what thing would you, do? you could do, you could, you know, arrange your program accordingly if you could, you know, change it, rearrange things. On the other hand, well, you could do that with four stops. Mm -hmm. But instead of being really loud, you would have just like mezzo forte. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But still, you have to choose between four, sure. four, four stops. Sure. Maybe yes. you could use combinations between yes. one, one, two, one, three, one, four. Two, three, two, four, right? Three, Sometimes four. Sometimes it's actually amazing how many things you can do, many nice things you can do with only few organ stops. Because, for example, you can do, you know, you can play, like, uh, use just four foot stop and play something. It would sound an octave higher. Or you can, you know, use eight foot stop and play an octave lower. And you will have completely different characters and different colors.
Right. So you decided uh, to to still to perform, right, yes. regardless of that limitation yeah. of the instrument. And uh, when you your plane has landed, you received a phone call from from the organizer telling you know Osha, the audience will be only kids between 10 and 16 years old. What would you do? Probably shorten program, because I think you know kids cannot listen for music for us such a long period of time as adults. And you know, I would probably include some familiar tunes for them to, you know, to listen to. Right. And uh, what about communication? Is communica communication important with teenagers? Yes, sure. And if 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 they speak the language that you don't, what would you do? Would you ask uh, an organizer to translate? For example, some of the things that you want to share with your audience? I think so. All right, that's that's a great idea. How about another limitation? Um, for example, what would happen if uh, you, on your way to your rehearsal, you you uh, you had get had stuck in traffic, okay, and you showed up late at your uh, rehearsal, right? Only fifteen minutes before the recital itself. What would you do? Is it possible still to perform and to, to put together a balanced organ recital program? I think maybe you should like to answer this question. <laughs> uh, it's it's a it's a really a hor horrific t situation, right? But sometimes it happens, right? Uh, what would you, what would we could do? Uh, probably we have done these things. For example, we we have traveled uh, with organ demonstrations in various towns in Lithuania, where uh, our demonstration would start uh, right after the mass, right? And there was no to time to prepare at all. So what would we, we could do is actually we would listen to how organist uh, performs uh, communion and postlude, for example. And then uh, uh, to pick up a little bit of the of the stops, that's uh, to get familiar with the instrument, right? And you, sometimes that would be enough to get acquainted with the instrument, right? Um, sometimes we could we have to change the program itself completely, for example, right? That's that's also necessary. Well, I think it's very important if the organ is unfamiliar and you know that you will not have time for rehearsal to choose easier repertoire that always works great uh, less pedal you know easier keys right uh, is it important to to carry um, more music than you really plan to sure. to sure. to perform for example if you if you are planning to perform 60 minutes recital would you advise people to um, i don't know get more scores into your into your case and uh, maybe have uh, like two hours of, of music sure. to choose from. that way you could, you know, for rearrange an emergency, your emergency, right? concerts. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, sometimes you are asked to play during service. Right, too. right. So it would be helpful. Great. So you arrived late, you, you, you had this stressful drive from the airport, right? And uh, you suddenly rush in into the into the church and uh, the organist organizer shows you the organ and uh, you have only 15 minutes to to rehearse you open your your uh, briefcase and you sh you you see that you have no music scores your music uh, scores are in lithuania <laughs> what would you do then you just have you know, to pick up hymnal <laughs> and to improvise Right. Is it possible to improvise from the hymnal still a balanced, uh, balanced organ program uh, based on the principles of variety, of loudness, uh, variety and loudness, of tempi, of mood, right? All these things. Is it still possible? I think so, yes. It's still possible. Mm -hmm. So you should always keep uh, at least um, how many? At least ten familiar hymn tunes in your heads, right? Sure. So you could uh, play on short notice uh, uh, in any key you want the melody of the tune and can harmonize, right? And play I don't know variations, perhaps. Sure, variations. 
It's not a difficult thing to do. Great. So, uh, apply these tips in your practice and your adventures in organ recitals will not be that horrific. Thanks. Thank you.